Okay. Okay, welcome to my channel. I am kind of chaotic sometimes, but um, I make videos about college, um, vlogs, you know, faith videos and travel videos when I travel. Um, but yeah, so I am a student at Yale. I'm on a gap semester right now. It's been kind of hectic for me with the whole like job search and everything because I'm going to be working while I'm not in school to get some extra cash. Um, but I also wanna focus on this YouTube video. So um, please comment some um, videos that you'd like to see about college because I know a lot of people are applying to college right now and I frantically search all over YouTube for help with my college process. So that's why I'm making these videos. So anyone else who's frantically searching can also get some help um, but today I wanted to talk about something that I think is problematic um, and I kind of participated in it and I didn't realize that my video was also problematic too but like the whole thing is problematic so okay so it's the how I got into Yale videos the stats and extracurriculars so basically, to sum up why I think it's problematic is because that's why I got in. Those are the things that I did, but like people are looking to that for advice. So I come here today to tell you actual advice of how to get into an Ivy League, not just giving you my whole resume. Um, yeah because I don't think that's very helpful. Um, I, I definitely was watching my video over again and I was like getting stressed and I was like, oh no, like people probably think they have to do all these things. Like, why did I post this? I'm so dumb. Like it wasn't advice. Like it was just me like giving my resume. So basically I think a good thing that I want to start off by saying was from that video, if you watched it, you saw um, that my SAT score was not perfect. Um, so I thought that was something important that I wanted to share. So my advice on the SAT, I'm gonna make a whole video about that as well, how to study for the SAT um, to get your score up. I went from about an 1100 to about a 1500. And yeah, your score doesn't have to be perfect to get into Ivy League. You still wanna have a pretty good score. Um, and I know also that a lot of schools aren't requiring it right now, so that's amazing. If you are very anxious with your test taking, have like bad test taking anxiety, like this year, don't even take it. Like if you took a practice test and you like did well, do it. Like send your scores in because it will help your application. I guarantee it because if they're looking at holistically then they're adding in your SAT. That's just going to say that the SAT is not the make or break thing of your application. Um, there's also all the other stats and extracurriculars and all that stuff that you have that you're sending to them and that's important to them. So um, I also mentioned in my video that I got all A's um, and I definitely think that is a requirement um, for, for the Ivy League. I definitely think that is like something that's really important, especially if your SAT score is lower. A lot of average candidates still at Ivy Leagues get all A's, so you want to be competitive and do get those scores as well. So then the other parts of the stat statistics 
of getting into um, an Ivy League school it would be AP or IB scores. Um, and yeah, so in my video, I was like, yeah, I took nine APs and I got fives on a lot of them. But um, an important thing to note is that you don't need APs to get into the Ivy League school and, and, and Ivy League school. So to explain that, what I mean is that if your school only offers two APs, the the colleges will know that like they'll see this courses that were offered at your school and so if your school only offers two APs and you only take two APs and like you do well in them like that's completely fine if your school offers no AP classes and you don't take any that's perfectly fine um, if you are excelling in your classes and your honors or in the highest level class that you can take completely fine. That moves me on to extracurriculars. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to point out that my extracurriculars, just to really emphasize, were specific to me. And the reason why they worked were also very specific. And I kind of planned my extracurriculars so they would work like this um, and so they would make sense to the colleges that I'm applying that I was applying to and so okay let me just explain a little bit it helps your application so much better if the admissions officer and you can clearly see how everything goes together I'm not saying you have to know what you want to study I knew I wanted to study political science, but this would still have worked if I didn't know that. Um, so basically what I did was I categorized the extracurriculars I wanted to do into three categories. And so mainly this was so I wouldn't overload myself and I'm not... I'm not just saying that like those were things that I did just so I would have a good resume. There were also things that I liked. So let me explain that a little more in depth though so, so it makes more sense. Okay, so three categories at most for extracurriculars. One category I had was um, languages, okay? The second category I had was political type things and the third category I had was volunteering and so those were the three things that I really felt drawn to in high school and I really wanted to focus on um, to get better at and also so the college that I want to get into saw that I had a passion and that was something that I really believe you should convey on your application the most important thing you should convey on your application you can do this through your extracurricular activities and so I wanted to show I was passionate about volunteering politics and language and kind of the intersection of the three things um, and so Yale could see that when I got to their school, I would be contributing to that area of social life and in the community. If I got even more specific of what goes into what category for languages, I took Spanish all, um, all four years of high school. And I also, um, going both in the language and volunteering category, I volunteered at a nonprofit. I can't speak. That helps um, immigrants um, with legal issues, and also there I just registered people to vote in Spanish and English. Um, so that kind of goes into all three categories. Going back to languages, 
I made the American Sign Language Club at my school. Um, and then for the political things, I did, I volunteered on the campaign. I had an internship over the summer with a lobbying group. I did youth in government, youth in law, model UN. Um, yeah, and so that's all a bunch of examples to show you how I kind of configured my application and how you can kind of do a similar thing. Um, I got this advice somewhere on the internet. Um, it's not something that I just thought of myself. I think it was like a prep scholar blog or something. And so those are really good. That is a really good site to have check out advice from. Um, but yeah, so I would say categorize your, your activities into three groups. And if something that wasn't super important to your application doesn't fit in. So for me, like I did, I did basketball for two years, but I didn't really mention it in a, any big way on my application because it didn't fit into what I wanted to do. I didn't put a lot of time into it um, and it wasn't really an important thing um, for me to continue doing it in college. Of course, I I love basketball. I'll do it for a hobby. I'll like play a pickup game anytime, but it wasn't something that I wanted to really highlight specifically on my application. But who? <laughs> I almost spilled my coffee. Um, yeah. So you shouldn't watch videos just spewing out their um their like resume to you and I am sorry that I made that video and it literally got 40,000 views to this date. Um, so I like hope everyone that watched that video watches this video and if you watched to here, um, if you watched to the end, please comment. Um, oh wait, I have to think of something that you have to comment. And if you've watched to the end and this was helpful to you, please comment, thank you, Hannah. And I will shout you out in my next video. And yeah, I just want to be closer with y'all and see how many people are actually watching this advice because these videos are something that I just think about and put a lot of effort into. And I'm hoping that y'all are just taking, taking something from them. And thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.